Well, hi everybody. Uh, it's been a uh, uh, more than two months since I uploaded my last video. I was been, uh, I have been a little bit busy at work, and uh, plus I was working on some of the projects, which might become a, a subject of uh, one of my next videos. But uh, what I would like to talk about today is um, a one, a little discovery that I've made, uh, and it's all about uh, this um, a digital uh, tachometer that I've purchased in order to. Uh, find out uh, an RPM uh, <clears throat> for some of the metalworking equipment I was working uh, with and I was actually uncertain about uh, actual uh, values for the RPMs due to the uh, differences between uh, North American 60 Hertz and Asian uh, 50 Hertz uh, AC power lines and things like that so I've decided to measure the, the RPMs and uh, compare them to um, to the uh, the ones uh, uh, displayed on on uh, on data sheet or on on uh, on the on the metal working equipment I was using, uh, which was a, a drill press or, or metal lathe or something like this, and um, what I found is I, I can get a very cheap uh, digital um, uh, tachometer uh, online um, for about twenty dollars, I'd say. Uh, comparable to other units it's it's pretty cheap and then uh, here's this uh, uh, unit you can see you can see the model and uh, how it looks like I think I'm, I'm pretty sure there are plenty of the, of different kinds uh, available on the internet and they are uh, made in China and um, uh, sold almost everywhere the principle behind this uh, digital tachometer is quite simple. It's uh, it's uh, just a, a L diode laser uh, or a powerful LED uh, with um, a photodiode or a phototransistor sensor, uh, which is used uh, in order to sense the reflections of the, um, uh, let's say, uh, a spindle or uh, any kind of rotating uh, rotating machinery and <clears throat> in order to make uh, this uh, tachometer work uh, you have to attach usually you have to attach a uh, reflective tape uh, some of the more expensive uh, units do not require um, you to do that and they can actually read uh, distinguish between the noise and uh, can find out the real RPMs within the noise or with this one obviously cannot so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take uh, uh, some measurements uh, for uh, to, in order to determine the accuracy of this uh, tachometer uh, using some of the simple setup that I have prepared and then I'm going to um, open it up I see what's inside um, try to reverse engineer the front end uh, that's used inside this tachometer and then uh, I will try to simulate that using a SPICE uh, simulator and compare it to actual um, circuit uh, when it's working and when it's powered up. And uh, there will be a little surprise. <laughs> I'm not now sure how, how much people will be excited about it, but there will be something. Uh, and that's inside, the, inside this thing. So let's, let's go. In order to set up this test, I'm going to use this ventilator, <coughs> which I pulled out from old motherboard. Um, the advantage of this, uh, the, the reason why I'm using this ventilator, basically, is that um, this has a, a 12, uh, this is a 12 volt uh, um, electrical motor, uh, basically, uh, with um, uh, two wires uh, used for power and one wire, uh, I believe this is the yellow wire, used uh, as a feedback. Um, the feedback is it uh, <coughs> is coming in the form of a square wave, which is equivalent to uh, two um, uh, periods per um, um, per revolution. So basically, if this uh, if this ventilator is spinning at a speed about 400 rpm, um, I should be able to get um, a square wave with a frequency of 800 out of this uh, out of this wire 
and I'm going to feed this into a, a multimeter which has a, a capability of reading um, a frequency uh, obviously this uh, this is not a frequency meter so it doesn't go doesn't go very high in terms of frequency but it's pretty accurate up to 400 kilohertz and obviously I don't believe uh, this ventilator will uh, uh, a little spin uh, anywhere faster than uh, 1000 rpm or maybe even 4000 so um, that should work pretty well so here's my setup I have connected the, <coughs> uh, the fan to a, a power supply and I've connected the output from the, uh, the, the, uh, the square wave uh, uh, from the, the fan uh, to uh, my multimeter and you can see it's it's uh, it's now showing uh, zero Hertz <coughs> because uh, the the fan is not spinning so if I turn it on um, um, it starts spinning at about 163 Hertz uh, that's uh, will be uh, 162 it's about 80 81 um, revolutions per second and um, if I take uh, something like a, a piece of paper and I abstract the airflow um, because there are less air flowing through the fan it will start spinning faster so uh, let me see As expected, uh, so the the less air is flowing through it, the less air has to move because the the air flow is obstructed. It starts spinning faster, so it's 180 hertz. And then if I remove the paper, it reads 161. So by using, uh, I can use airflow to to change the RPMs uh, very easily. So now I've connected a piece of uh, paper. <coughs> I've attached a piece of paper to a fan and uh, you can see right here there is uh, another chunk of uh, uh, reflective tape uh, that's uh, on top of it. So I had to use a, a black marker in order to the, make the, the surface uh, beneath the, uh, the tape a little bit darker. Uh, hopefully that will improve the accuracy of the reading. Oh, probably wasn't really necessary and um, <coughs> so I ran out of a 9 volt batteries uh, so <laughs> you can see <laughs> I'm using my power supply to uh, power up this uh, uh, this um, and this uh, tachometer so let's turn on the power and see uh, what we, uh, what kind of reading we can get so um, I'm using I'm trying to focus this uh, the the red spot of coming out of this tachometer on a, on a disc and um, let me use my left hand and I'm reading about 4, 8, 38 RPM so um, it reads zero, and I can see it's reading four eight thirty eight four eight thirty two. So I, I want to get close to the ventilator, so obstruct the airflow. And it's not that stable so oops so right now it's 4824 uh, when I'm reading 160 Point forty six four eight nineteen.
Okay, so what do we get? Uh, we get uh, <coughs> this is this is the uh, final reading I got uh, uh, from tachometer. So do we get? I get four thousand eight hundred nineteen uh, RPM uh, reading on a tachometer. At the same time, I was reading one hundred RPM, one hundred sixty point forty eight hertz on my multimeter. So. If I take uh, if I take my calculator and I, <coughs> I quickly calculate uh, what's expected uh, frequency should be in this case, say 48 and 19 uh, divided by 60 multiplied by two, um, it's 160.63 a free period hertz. And if I do the same calculation in the reverse, if I take 160.48 uh, multiplied by 60 divided by 2, I get expected reading 0.4. Um, it doesn't display the decimal points. So <clears throat> in any case, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, subtract uh, the reading, which is 48.19, and I get minus 4.6 RPM, which is an absolute error. And if I divide it by uh, 4.18.19 and multiply it by 100, I get zero zero point ninety five percent. So it's roughly zero point one percent accuracy uh, for this uh, for this tachometer. Okay, let's take a look inside. Um, can I unscrew this really fast? Oops. Okay, so what do we see here? <laughs> um, in the beginning of this video, I actually uh, said that there will be a little surprise and we will find it inside. And, um, <coughs> um, do you see this? I mean, <laughs> I don't think it's it's actually uh, I, I I deliberately uh, made a, a camera uh, to uh, zoom in closer, uh, so because it's kind of hard to see. But um, when I took this apart, because it wasn't really working properly, uh, due to the fact that this uh, this photo transistor right here uh, was obstructing the light, which was coming from this. Uh, um, uh, diode laser right here and it, because of this it, it wasn't really working and I just I just had to move it a bit uh, to fix it when I got it delivered um, but what I noticed right away is 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 how this thing is built and then when I started looking at it what I discovered is the amount of dirt and dust on most of the on some of the components uh, that were soldered on the boards. So if you can see right here, so the board looks board looks pretty new, and certainly it doesn't have any dust. Um, it didn't. It wasn't exposed to any any kind of dusty environment or anything. I pretty much kept it in a box right here and I used it maybe once or twice. So uh, <clears throat> then I took uh, I took my stereo microscope and I look closer to so some of these parts 
and I found that most of these components, including the uh, this um, operational amplifier, this Atmel um, a CPU or microcontroller, uh, this um, crystal right here, and um, this uh, uh, 74 series uh, uh, buffer right here, and perhaps even uh, some of the some of the through hole components like these capacitors, and uh, certainly this <laughs> uh, this diode laser. These are all reused parts. Um, they they have been reused, and you can see um, some of this um, uh, some of this uh, uh, this uh, this PCB board is actually designed to take uh, different uh, versions of uh, of the component, um, probably due to the fact that they can't actually find the the component. They 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 always find different components to reuse, and then. Um, it can either be this. Uh, so there's there's a solder mask uh, and uh, which says LED right here, and uh, this is obviously not LED. This is uh, uh, this is uh, a small um, a small uh, diode laser. Uh, from some other device uh, with one of its feet <laughs> being cut off and um, <clears throat> uh, what they did as well is that uh, the back of this uh, of this uh, um, uh, for the transistor is being uh, painted black uh, so that it um, uh, to prevent uh, um, the light from the the, the diode laser uh, from shining through the back of the photo transistor and and uh, uh, preventing that would that would makes it uh, almost impossible to to use or make it less sensitive because that light will obstruct the reading um, which is the reflected signal i say i've never seen a product uh, that uh, even even a cheap product <laughs> like this <laughs> Uh, which was designed and implemented uh, using uh, used parts and which was sold on the market. Um, well, at least to me, that was quite a surprise. Well, this is a very primitive uh, board design. I, I can see uh, what's the problem here right away. And I said when I received it, it wasn't working at all. So I was wondering why. And um, obviously, uh, this for a transistor should have been mounted in some kind of in some different way so that it doesn't because it does still uh, partially obstructs the light from this uh, um, uh, diode uh, laser uh, which is coming out from here and then when I <coughs> uh, so it works very simple it's uh, when you when you press the button which is at the bottom what I need to do in this case is just I push it against the table and it's uh, it presses the button which is which says uh, test on it and it's it's just uh, powers up the circuit and uh, everything including the microcontroller starts working at this moment and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to reverse engineer uh, the parts of the circuit <coughs> the only part I think uh, is it could be interesting it's uh, I don't really expect anything at all because I can see only few parts on the board that would be um, <coughs> pretty simple for uh, for uh, to uh, to reverse engineer this board plus the board itself is 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 double sided i can basically uh, probably even take a picture of it uh, or in a scanner or um, uh, just photo of it and then i use um, uh, something like a photoshop in order to uh, uh, trace the tracks uh, but some of it uh, is obstructed by the components uh, on the board so i've decided I can just use a, a, a pen and paper and then just see what kind of circuit is, is it used uh, here at the front end. And what I already see right uh, right now here is that uh, it's, uh, it's LM358 
that's the most common operational amplifier you can find uh, out there and, and that's the one that's used in the f uh, as a front end um, amplifier uh, for the circuit and um, in addition to this uh, there is a um, the logic IC um, uh, which is right here it's an HF HEF 4050BT uh, which is um, Uh, it, this is like eight um, and negative uh, negating buffers or something like that. Uh, I, let me. I'm going to check uh, uh, the the internet uh, see if I can find the data sheet for this one. And um, <coughs> there are some uh, some uh, you can see probably some transistors. Uh, they marked as T1, T2. Um, I'm not sure why, but uh, if if this uh, this product was designed in uh, in Asia, perhaps they they used uh, T as uh, a marking for transistors rather than Q, which is more more common uh, in uh, in um, in North America. And uh, let me try see if I can reverse engineer this thing. So after some experimentation and uh, <coughs> tracing, uh, tracing this uh, the the sensor part of this board, I finally come up with <coughs> with the final schematics of this uh, of this tachometer's uh, sensor. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this uh, this schematic and try to enter it into a spice and um, uh, see if it's actually uh, it will actually work uh, I'm just very curious if, if, if this if this is how this schematic is, uh, is, is, is being recovered accurately I think it is the only surprise I got from here is that uh, this uh, second part of the um, uh, uh, operational amplifier is uh, simply used as a buffer and I don't see a reason why um, my understanding is that uh, if uh, both parts are used uh, to um, uh, split the amplification, uh, the the operational amplifier would have a, a much higher bandwidth. Uh, but I'm not quite sure if they actually, if that's what they were looking for, or they they, they just uh, wired up this uh, second part as a buffer just just so that it's 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 used since it's there already. I'm not quite sure why, but um, maybe I just uh, I'm just not familiar with this uh, with this circuit very much. I've um, I've determined that this uh, this component um, uh, with the sensor itself is a transistor uh, because I measured the resistance of it in um, uh, both directions and it shows. Um, about 14 kilo, uh, kilo ohm in one direction and about 48 kilo ohm in, in the reverse direction kind of uh, uh, sort of suggests that this is a phototransistor rather than this is uh, uh, this is not um, a photodiode and uh, then I try to shine some light on it and resistors start changing so obviously uh, this is a phototransistor that they use here uh, as a sensor so I've connected a probe of my oscilloscope to the uh, to the board. And I'm going to use the same trick um, by pressing on on the on this 
uh, bottom part of the tachometer I'm pushing on a, on a test button and you can see on st it start working and then I <coughs> I'm using a 9 volt supply um, instead of a battery in this case and every time I move a finger I can see that it generates a negative pulse on my oscilloscope which is um, <coughs> which matches the schematics basically because uh, um, you see here is there is a 5 volt uh, supply which goes through uh, a phototransistor and every time <coughs> uh, there is a pulse of light that reflects uh, reflects off the surface such as the, the, the reflective tape it um, <coughs> makes a transistor more conductive in this case and then as a result uh, you will we'll see uh, a positive pulse uh, that uh, um, goes uh, through uh, an AC coupling uh, capacitor, uh, C9, which is a simple uh, 10 microfarad capacitor in this case. And that positive pulse goes into a negative input at this first amplifier. Um, and then uh, so it inverts the, the, the signal by uh, at the same time amplifies it. So this is a uh, um, um, essentially a comparator this circuit doesn't uh, uh, have any um, does not really convert the signal rather it goes from one rail uh, from a positive <coughs> immediately down to a negative once uh, the pulse uh, exceeds uh, a certain uh, threshold and uh, the resistors in this case are, uh, are high value resistors uh, make this circuit uh, um, sensitive enough uh, so that it's uh, but not too sensitive so it doesn't really get uh, get triggered off the noise and um, um, this second part uh, is simply a, a buffer so what I expect what we expect to see on the output of this is a negative pulse every time we um, uh, put something that would reflect the the light of the of the the laser diode. So, <coughs> which is uh, which is going to I'm going to demonstrate that. I'm going to show that on a on a oscilloscope. So again, what I'm doing here is um, every time I'm I'm, uh, I'm moving my finger in front of this. So if I move my finger in front of a, uh, in front of the the photo transistor, you can see that. It generates uh, negative pulses, which is similar to what happened when uh, uh, when uh, um, the the red spot of the tachometer uh, points to the the uh, uh, reflective surface, such as the reflective paper. And you didn't see any. Uh, <laughs> um, that the, the, on this schematics you didn't see any bypass capacitors because uh, well I, I didn't find any <laughs> there aren't any bypass capacitors used here uh, here is the same same circuit I've entered it into a spice simulator and I'm using a, a voltage pulse um, a source uh, to simulate uh, for the transistor in this case and uh, if I run the simulation, you can see that it's pretty much um, exactly as um, I have previously captured using my oscilloscope. Well, that's it. This is the end of, uh, of this review of a digital tachometer um, made out of recycled parts. <laughs> Who would have thought? I, I would never thought that you can make uh, these days, especially uh, you can make a... Uh, uh, a product on the market uh, uh, out of uh, recycled parts and uh, make a profit out of it obviously that only works if you have access to very uh, cheap labor because you can't put those parts into pick and place machines and things like that but it works um, in this case so <laughs> well see you next time